uh, I was walking in the streets of Nairobi, a friend of mine that I had not seen for quite a while, we met and uh, lo and behold, they said, you know, I've got some papers here that relate to people who want to mis migrate to Australia. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, this is interesting. So we went home, uh, we looked at the papers with Jane, and we didn't know whether this was really true or whether it was not true. true. We didn't know whether it was genuine. Mm. However, we decided what would it cost us? It's going to cost us nothing. Why don't we give it a, a go, mm. a shot? And uh, after three months of deliberating, we gave it a go. We yes. started the process. And within six months, uh, like I said, I was qualified uh, as an accountant. Mm. My wife was qualified as a, as a high school maths teacher, although oh. she was not teaching. Okay. She had taken a different career path. Yeah. And there was a high need for skilled migrants in the accounting profession and in the teaching profession. Yes. So that's how we got our way to Australia. Mm. People can sell information to you that is not right. Yes. Okay. Australia is a wonderful place. It has wonderful advantages. But then you also need to be aware of what other challenges can be there. Mm. It is really important, especially from a financial perspective, that people are well prepared. And the Australian government has it put in place procedures of having to cancel and look at is this candidate really viable to oh. come and study here okay because it's a far away country mm -hmm. it's not close to home and i would say generally if we follow those guidelines and make the right assessment then the opportunity is wonderful. You are getting a student from here to the other side. So what happens in between? What happens when she gets to Australia? Yeah. So the first thing is that uh, it's important to work with licensed mm -hmm. agents. Okay. okay. If you are dealing with a company that is legitimate, that know what they are doing, the first thing is really to cancel and interview the, the child and the parent. You can only come to Australia in two ways, either as a student or as a skilled migrant. Mm. It's really important to study something that really is valuable to you as a human being, as an individual. Beautiful. Okay? If we plan ourselves well, we do the due diligence, we look at our children, Australia is a wonderful place to go. Okay. A very good morning to you and a warm welcome to LNS Rebuilding Series. My name is Lynn Googie. Now, if you've not watched uh, Dr. Albert Koche's conversation in regards to parents who are sending their kids abroad, uh, then you might want to catch it before we listen to our guest today. My guest is an incredible person. He actually wrote me an email and said, Lynn, I have lived in Australia almost for over 20 years uh, and he wanted to give us a couple of classes clarification and also give us advice on the best way to go about exactly if you are planning on sending your kids abroad and in this aspect Australia and he will be talking to us more about the doctor's conversation and what are some of the things that should be factual in that previous uh, show. I'm about to let him introduce himself but before I do that I have to say thank you so much to our official partners of today's conversation Tap Tap Send Sita Ongea Mob. If you are looking for a reliable app to be able to send money back home why don't you try them guys and you can get 10 percent cash back by using my code lean on the figures appearing on your screen right now and you can download their app it's pinned on the comment section and of course to say thank you so much to you guys for having been incredible supporters of our work the year is over we have done incredible stories you guys have walked the journey with us and i see it i acknowledge it and I know how much you guys value our work and if you've not subscribed actually one of our audience told me to let you know subscription is free some of you shy away from hitting the subscription button because you think it's charged no it's free it will enable us make it will enable our work get to more people and be recommended to more people so that we can continue changing the nations one story at a time and now without further ado please allow Allow me to let this gentleman introduce himself. Sir, good morning. Good morning, Lynn. How are you? I'm terrific, thank you. You are good, good? Yeah, I'm very good. All right, please yeah. introduce yourself. Yes, uh, my name is John Kamaungatia. Yeah. And uh, first and foremost, I would have to say it's a privilege for you to have me yeah. on your show. Uh, I acknowledge the work you're doing. Yes. It's, it's, it's wonderful mm -hmm. because in my own humble opinion, information is powerful. Yes. 
uh, and uh, what you're doing is incredible. Yeah. You know, letting people, sensitizing people, and helping them. Mm. You know, as they, nav as they navigate through the journey of life. Okay. Uh, so a little bit about myself. Um, you know, I, I've been very fortunate um, having the foundation laid in Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, and I left for Australia. Uh, this is my 25th year living in Australia. 25 good years. Yes. Ah. And um, it's an incredible country, yeah. uh, a wonderful opportunity. And uh, maybe I might say that there, there, there are only two aspects or two ways that mm -hmm. somebody can come to mm -hmm. live in Australia. Mm -hmm. One is the way we left. Uh, we left here as skewed migrants. Yes. Uh, me, my wife, and at that time, two children. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been very blessed since then. We have uh, a daughter, uh, McKenna. And um, the other way that one can get themselves yeah. through to Australia is through uh, the student pathway. Um, and, um, you know... Uh, I didn't go there, like I said, through the student pathway, mm -hmm. but we've had quite a population of yes. Kenyans come to Australia through the student pathway. Uh, as a matter of fact, if we go back to uh, those years when we went to Australia, yeah. um, we were three Kenyan families and uh, a few students. Uh, I think in total, uh, where I live, I live in the city of Adelaide, yes. which is the capital city of South Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, we were, I would say, about 20 of us in, the, in terms of numbers, yeah. including children. Today, I would have to say that uh, that population has really grown uh, to about almost close to over 3,000 Kenyans, yeah. specifically just in Adelaide. Okay. So mm. I would have to say there has to be something good. Yes, uh, you, you, are know. <laughs> you are a pioneer. <laughs> yes. yes, and yes. I think uh, if we go back again to those days, uh, the, the, the key genesis of why that has happened is that, uh, you know, if you go somewhere and you find something good, mm -hmm. The, it's only natural that you want to share that with yes. other human beings. Yes. Uh, and that's how it has progressed. Okay. Uh, so we've got, you know, various professions that have come through the skewed migration program. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of students that have come and then taken on residence All in, right. in Australia. So uh, I, I love that you've said yeah. you've been there for 25 good years. Yes. You're among the pioneers. So yeah. there must be something good yeah. in Australia. Yeah. But I'm really interested maybe in a bit of your personal details. Yeah. Going there, yeah. why did you leave home? Oh, good question. Um, I, I went through school in Kenya, mm -hmm. uh, qualified as an accountant. Uh, and I did work as an accountant yes. uh, in, in Kenya. And... Uh, Life has a way of um, uh, somehow conniving for you to meet your goals. Mm. And I'll go back to when I was a young boy, uh, around about the age of 12. Uh, I still remember vividly uh, my uncle then, he's now since passed on, yes. taking me to go and watch the first movie ever. Uh, I grew up in Yeri, so there was a, uh, a theater that was run by an Asian, yeah. Kenyan Asian. And we went for this movie, and it was a cowboy movie. And I was mesmerized. It was the first time I've ever been to a movie. I was mesmerized by this person on a, on a, on a horse, mm. a large herd of yes. cattle. Yes. And I thought to myself, wow, I would love to live like that. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it's true uh, in life that uh, as human beings, we've been endowed with certain faculties that are different from every, any other creation. Mm -hmm. And it is those faculties that allow us to live and design our life, uh, so to speak. Some of us might not be aware of that. Yes. And I was not aware of that. But that movie mesmerized me and I started thinking, you know, I would love to live overseas. I would love to experience something like mm. this. So lo and behold, I went through school, uh, went to primary school, uh, did quite well. I come from what I would call a relatively very average family. As okay. a matter of fact, my initial uh, life, I grew with my grandmother in oh. a village called Gatunganga eh. in Madeira. Yes. And, uh, you know, some of these things shape our destiny. My, my grandmother uh, was quite a wise woman. Uh, and I agree with her the first formative years that we moved to Nyeri. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I would like to really paint the picture that uh, if you told me those days that I would live in a place like Australia, I would say that you're out of your mind, yeah. to be very honest. Yeah. Um, and I think that relates to a lot of people. Most of us come from humble uh, beginnings. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's also testimony that uh, as human beings, there's a lot that can happen along that journey. Yes. 
So anyhow, um, this first movie, uh, I, I did well in primary school, uh, got admitted very mm. fortunately to Kagumo High School. Mm. Uh, those days, Kagumo was, uh, was one of the top schools yes. in Kenya. Uh, did well, progressed to Nyandaro High School, then uh, left Nyandaro, went to college. I mm. went to start my accounting career mm -hmm. in uh, Kemathi Institute, which is today, I think, a university. Yes. And from there, you know, finished accounting there, went to Strathmore, began working. Mm. And I started working as an accountant. Okay. And uh, as life would have it, uh, I still remember I, I, I finished my career as an accountant mm. and thought I'm going to get into business. Uh, started a construction business here. <laughs> yeah, uh, real estate. Real estate. Yeah. Uh, although I was building. Okay. Uh, basically building for people. Yeah. We built a few homes in Nairobi. Oh. Uh, Economically, things were very tough those days, uh, and this is what prompted us to start thinking, what else can we do? Mm -hmm. yeah. Things were tough, then. Th things, I think things were tough, um, and I, I think it, it's always relative. Yes. Uh, they were tough in the sense that, uh, and, and uh, I hope people uh, uh, can see that I'm not trying to put down Kenya. Yeah. It's just the reality of life. Uh, they were tough in the sense that from a business perspective, uh, the level of corruption that we had then, the level of you have to know people. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we reflected back and, you know, our kids were very, very, very young. Yes. And we thought, you know, do we want to continue this way or do we want to look for an opportunity yeah. maybe that, uh, you know, we can, uh, we can bring up our kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, lo and behold... The truth is, I can speak that now, you know, having, doing what I'm doing now, mm. and I'll, I'll talk about what I do yes. now. Uh, whenever a human being has a goal or uh, you're inspired by a challenge, to resolve that challenge, you get ideas. And things happen. And uh, so we thought, you know, uh, maybe it might be a good opportunity for us to look for, for other opportunities. Mm. And uh, I still remember vividly, uh, I was walking in the streets of Nairobi, a friend of mine that I had not seen for quite a while, we met and uh, lo and behold, they said, you know, I've got some papers here that relate to people who want to mis migrate to Australia. Mm -hmm. I thought, oh, this is interesting. So we went home, uh, we looked at the papers with Jane, and we didn't know whether this was really true or whether it was not true. true. We didn't know whether it was genuine. Mm -hmm. However, we decided what would it cost us? It's going to cost us nothing. Why don't we give it a, a go, mm -hmm. a shot? And uh, uh, after three months of deliberating, we gave it a go. We yes. started the process. And within six months, uh, like I said, I was qualified uh, as an accountant. Mm. My wife was qualified as a, as a high school maths teacher, although oh. she was not teaching. Okay. She had taken a different career path. Yeah. And there was a high need for skilled migrants in the accounting profession and in the teaching profession. Yes. So that's how we got our way to Australia. Okay. Um, it was quite a scary kind of uh, situation when you reflect back now, because we didn't know anybody. Uh, it's a very far country. And uh, uh, along the way also, we had the opportunity, we could go to Canada, mm. still as skilled migrants. Yes. And uh, our analysis was that Canada is too cold. Uh, you know, we, we love the mm -hmm. warmer, warmer mm -hmm. weather. Mm -hmm. And so we made the decision to go to Australia. And those days, one of the key things that caused us to make the decision to go to Adelaide specifically is because, number one, Nairobi is a big city. Yes. Uh, lots of traffic. Not as much as it we have it now, mm. but there was still traffic mm -hmm. then. We thought we'd like to go to a small city, you know, where we don't have uh, a lot of traffic and also where the cost of living would be reasonable. We okay. didn't have a heap of money there. Yes. We had limited resources. Um, and uh, Adelaide was quite favorable mm -hmm. in, in that sense. And also in Adelaide, there was what they used to call a skewed migration program whereby people who had migrated to Australia already, they would meet you at the airport. Wow. Uh, the government then had an opportunity, what they, they call uh, housing, government housing yes. or housing trust, whereby you'd get a house, you'd live there for three months. Uh, it was fully furnished. Free. No, it was not oh, free. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you still had to pay rent. Yes. However, it was a token rent, not oh. exactly like a commercial okay. rate rent. Yeah. So that was very uh, favorable and suitable for us based on the situation yes. we had then. Uh, because to be very honest, uh, the moment we landed in Australia, if somebody had said to us, you shouldn't be here, you have to pay for another flight back, we would not have been able to do that. Uh, and it takes courage in life. It takes courage. It takes determination. Uh, it takes willing to step out of the comfort zone to try new things. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm glad that we did make that move. Uh, and like I say, at that point in time, there was 
two other families, yes. uh, and we corroborated with those two other families. Kenyan. Yes, Kenyan yes. families. Yes. Uh, we corroborated before we left, and we decided Adelaide is going to be the place. Mm. I was very lucky in the sense of, uh, to be very honest, within three weeks, I had a job as an accountant. Wow. And uh, for me, um, it is testimony of the kind of uh, systems that Australia has as a developed nation uh, because it gave us an opportunity to start afresh. I worked as an accountant for a number of years. I worked for various organizations. Yeah. Uh, however, I must say, even when we made the decision to go to Australia, I still had the ambition and the decision that after some time I was going to start my own business. Mm. And so uh, come the year 2010, and two, towards two, the end of 2002, uh, I started a new business. Oh, I, st I got into business in mm -hmm. personal development. Mm -hmm. um, and to get you back, uh, again, this has to do with our journey of life yes. and the way opportunities come. It depends on whether we are really looking and seeing those opportunities. I still remember walking into a bookshop. Uh, that, that bookshop is still here in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. uh, it's at uh, the 20th century. There's a bookshop down there. Mm -hmm. I walked into that bookshop. Many years ago, one of my uncles, you know, all of us, even from a Kenyan context, we always have an uncle that's our favorite. Yes, yes. And uh, Uncle Simon, he's now since passed on. Yeah, he was okay. my favorite. And he taught me the importance of reading books. And uh, he was an, uh, an avid reader uh, of novels, the Wilby Smith. So he put me into that culture of yes. reading books. So when I walked into this bookshop many years ago, I picked up a book by Tony Robbins, Unlimited Power. Wow. And uh, I read that book and I thought, my God, if this is true, I really would like to live life like this, whereby, you know, you understand the faculties, we have a mind, we are endowed with faculties of imagination, uh, we, we have thoughts yes. that can be creative. Yes. And I applied the principles in mm -hmm. that book. Mm -hmm. And uh, I would have to say that that's part and parcel yes. of our journey going to Australia. It's interesting, uh, the first trip that we ever made as a family when we were in Australia is, uh, was to Melbourne. Melbourne is about 900 kilometers yeah. from Adelaide. Okay. We drove. Yes. And along the way, we took uh, a rest at a place called Ballarat. And lo and behold, my wife puts on the TV and who comes up? Anthony Robbins, this guy I keep talking about because of the way that his book had profoundly yes. impacted me. And I took up details of uh, Anthony Robbins. There was a program. I bought those programs. And uh, within a few months, I was in a program with Tony, Ro uh, Tony Robbins. And uh, within that program, I met my business partners whom we've been in business since then. Okay. And uh, the business that we commenced is uh, coaching, training, and mentoring people. Wow. Uh, it's been a profound journey of really impacting people because the resources we have within ourselves as human beings are truly incredible. You know what? Yeah. I didn't know this part about you, yeah. but when we spoke, yes. even the way your email came, yeah. it came with so much authenticity, respect. I actually, for a moment right there, I felt like I was talking to my father or big brother, and I didn't know this part about, like it came with so much leadership yeah. skills. Even when we were speaking on the phone, I just felt really, you know, I, I, I could breathe. I was like, at first I thought, Lynn, what are you saying about Australia? Then I was like, no, but you came, your approach was really beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't know this part about your leadership and coaching, you know? Yeah, so yes. anyway, I, I think, uh, and it's important for people to understand that because the challenges we face in life are actually opportunities. You see, the only way to grow, if you really think about it, and all of us have, have experienced challenges yes. one way or the other, those challenges make us better people. Yes. Okay? They make us think differently. Okay? However, it's only if you see them as an opportunity. Yes. If you see them as a detriment, That's then, uh, you know, uh, and behold, it becomes your reality. Yes. Because the truth is, Lynn, uh, and whether you look at it from a spiritual perspective uh, or whether you look at it from a scientific perspective, yeah. uh, the human being is really incredible in the sense that from a spiritual perspective, we are told, before you speak, I will hear. So what comes before speaking? Yeah. It's your thoughts. 
your thoughts and what's going on between the two years yes. is incredible. Yes. And the truth is, nobody can ta teach you how to think. The thoughts that you think, you choose to pick up those thoughts. Now, whether we understand that or not is a totally yes. different matter. Yeah. Okay? Uh, and uh, so at, at, at Soul Resorts, that's a company that mm -hmm. we started 2000, in the year 2003. That's when I joined yeah. as, as one of the, the co-founders. Not the, really a co-founder. The three of the other directors uh, okay. founded it. I founded my own. Yes. And then because of the relationship we had since so the Tony partners. Robbins, we, we, they, uh, Stan, who is my other business mm -hmm. partner, mm -hmm. really encouraged and said, John, come on, you, you need to be part of us. And yeah. Since 2003, I've been part uh, and part of, uh, okay. of uh, So Resorts. However, like I said before, is that uh, I still had this idea when I left Kenya to get into business. Uh, so I ended up getting into So Resorts. Uh, and uh, we've coached hundreds of people. Mm -hmm. uh, and our coaching is really about coaching people about success. Because it's not our education that creates success. It's how we think and how we perceive life that actually creates success. And like I said, we've been endowed with certain faculties as human beings. And if we learn how to use those faculties, then success becomes almost yes. uh, uh, guaranteed. guaranteed. You know, because it is not where we come from. It is what we do uh, through life that determines our, our, our level of success. Mm, yeah. uh, I left the accounting profession. Uh, we've been coaching, like I said. I still coach. Uh, personally, I would always say that I will, I will not retire. Yes. I might slow down uh, because I'm very privileged to be able to share uh, knowledge and skill sets that are transforming for human, mm -hmm. human beings. Mm -hmm. And really my mission is really to empower as many people as possible yes. to live a life that is fulfilling, uh, a life that is uh, abundantly mm -hmm. with wealth, mm -hmm. with health, and wonderful relationships. Yes. And as a consequence of that, I've been involved in the Kenyan community. Uh, I got involved in the Kenyan community as uh, we have a very strong, I would have to say, and it's important for people to know this, it's called the Kenyan Association of South Australia, uh, an organization that was begun to look at the welfare of Kenyans in, in Adelaide. Mm -hmm. uh, and it came as a result of facing challenges, uh, challenges uh, not only in Kenya, but anyway in the world. Yes. As human beings, we're going to face similar challenges. And you'll find that human mm -hmm. beings, irrespective of where you go, mm -hmm. we all have common common desires. Yes. We want to be loved, we want to succeed, uh, we want to live a better life. Uh, it's not any different. Uh, the environment could be different, for mm -hmm. example, Australia and here. The environment in Australia, I would say, is quite enabling uh, in, that, in that respect. Yes. Um, so that's the way the Kenyan Association of South Australia was, mm -hmm. was born, um, you know, out of the community facing some challenges. And it's an incredible organization. I was very privileged to head that organization a few years ago. And out of that, I interacted with students. You know, it's really important to listen to, because like I said, you can only come to Australia in two ways, either as a student or as a skewed migrant. Mm. And our needs and our way of looking at things would obviously be different from a student perspective, from yes. somebody who's come there as a skilled migrant. However, the challenge is basically when you look at it, they all, we all face certain mm -hmm. challenges. Mm -hmm. um, and out of that, uh, you know, I got to maybe get closer to younger Kenyans. And uh, uh, out of that also the idea of uh, starting another company where we facilitate uh, and help Kenyans who want to come and study in Australia mm -hmm. arose. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have a business in that, in that space. Yeah. Uh, whereby, you know, we, we advise, we mentor, we, we, we counsel people who want to come and study uh, in Australia. Yes. Uh, and Australia, New Zealand, are very similar countries, mm -hmm. and, and um, that's how I've interacted or we continue interacting with Kenya. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, it's, uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to be able to facilitate that avenue um, and uh, see young Kenyans come and they succeed and, and help them navigate the challenges that they would face mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to, to living in a new country, yes. new environment, new culture. Yeah. Um, if you are not given the right advice, uh, it's very easy for people, you know, to, to go astray. Mm. Yeah. I oh, that's, that's, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, okay. I love that I found, I, I love that I found the right person to have this conversation with because the elephant in the room yeah. was a conversation we had or now by the time this airs it's all it's going to be like a week ago yeah. now the elephant in the room and the comment section especially yeah. of that particular video very mixed reactions right in that particular video yeah. and i remember asking myself 
if we are going to send, and I remember that was Dr. Albert's concern, yeah. if we are going to send our kids to Australia, are we sending them to a good place or a place that's hard to navigate? And I love that you've given us that clarification. You've been there for over 25 years, so you know the ins and outs, right? So let me ask you, yeah. right now, given yeah. the way things are, would you advise parents to send their kids who just finished high school to Australia? Uh, good question. Uh, I would say yes and no. Mm -hmm. Okay. Why do I say yes and no? First and foremost, let us really clearly understand that even our children, all of us as individuals, we are all different. Yes. Okay. The way we perceive things is going to be very different and is going to be dependent on a number of factors. Number one, maybe the foundation that we've had. Okay. Uh, I have three children. They are all different. Yeah. Okay. They will all, and they've been brought up in the same environment. Yes. Same environment, same values. But it is true mm -hmm. that they are different. Mm -hmm. So the reason why I say yes and no is because we've had experiences of children who've come there at 18, at 19, and they've been successful. Mm -hmm. It's true that, you know, they, they, they would all be different. Yes. It, it's important that uh, first and foremost, mm -hmm. as parents, that we understand that. So, for example, uh, just before I came, yeah. uh, I, I, I do mentor uh, a number of, of not many, very many Kenyans, but yes. there are quite a number of young, young mm -hmm. Kenyans mm -hmm. that we coach and mentor. And uh, one of the clients is an engineer. Uh, you know, he came to Australia as a 19-year-old kid. He's been successful, okay? Was it easy? I would say it might not have been easy. But is the end journey a good journey? Yes, it is, okay? Because he's doing very well. He's quite successful. On the same token, we've had children who've come at that tender age and it has been quite a challenge for them. So the first premise I would say, it's really important, even from a parent perspective, really analyze, you know, we know our kids, okay? Let's analyze and see, is this kid, even here in, a, in Kenya, are they capable of navigating in a new land, mm -hmm. in a new, you know, new environment? If it's a tick, then I would say, yes, it is a wonderful opportunity to do that. Uh, if you find that uh, probably your child is not well endowed that way, then I would say let them first do their first degree here and then let us look at them coming and do a postgraduate degree. Because even as you navigate through life, you have experiences, you know, you, you are more endowed to deal with adversity. So that's the first thing I would mm -hmm, say. Mm -hmm. The second very important aspect is to make sure that we get the right information. People can sell information to you that is not right. Yes. Okay. Australia is a wonderful place. It has wonderful advantages. But then you also need to be aware of what other challenges can be there. Mm -hmm. It is really important, especially from a financial perspective, that people are well prepared. And the Australian government has it put in place procedures of having to counsel and look at is this candidate really viable to oh. come and study here okay because it's a faraway country mm -hmm. it's not close to home and i would say generally if we follow those guidelines and make the right assessment then the opportunity is wonderful i want to understand this yes. in a layman's language yes. lean now yeah. i want to send my daughter yeah. who is let's call my daughter dama i want to send dama now to australia yes. Uh, who do I go to? Okay. You are talking about getting the right information. Yeah. What are these places that we need to get the right information from? Yeah. Because I think one of the points, Dr. Albert uh, Rose, uh, what one thing that rose from that conversation yeah. was having agencies that do not care about the end. So remember, you are getting a student from here to the other side. So what happens in between? And I love that I have no knowledge of this because now I would want to understand. If I take my dama and I'm sending her to Australia, yeah. what happens when she gets to Australia? Yeah. So the first thing is that uh, uh, it's important to work with licensed mm -hmm. agents. Okay. okay. When I say licensed agent, they should be even authorized by the Kenyan government. You have to pay licenses. It needs to be a legitimate company mm -hmm. that you're dealing with. Okay, uh, so do your due diligence. There are a few uh, companies that uh, have uh, people who are in Australia that are owners like myself. Mm -hmm. uh, there are maybe about three, three or so. And that's a good place to start in the sense of you're dealing with people who really understand Australia. Okay, and there are other bigger companies that also 
help and facilitate that, that mm -hmm. opportunity. Mm -hmm. So the first thing is, as somebody who is looking at taking the, the, yes. the child out there, make sure you do your due diligence uh, and you're dealing with legitimate good companies. Okay, That's number one. Number two, there is the process. The mm -hmm. process is, if you're dealing with a company that is legitimate, that know what they're doing, the first thing is really to cancel and interview the, the child and the parent and lay down exactly what's meant to happen. Now, good. Another thing that rose from the conversation, yes. fake bank documents, yes. right? And I've seen it. It took Kenya. So you'll just go and say, my bank has 10 million. Mtoto amefika. Your account really has nothing. How, how does the Australian government on the other side do their due diligence to make sure the bank statements that are being provided are authentic? Do they double check or as long as you provide a bank statement, that's it? Well, there are checks and balances. Mm -hmm. First and foremost, the person that, uh, the, the, the agency that you're dealing with, yes. they need to also look at and verify that those, those statements are and true. The, not, not just statements, even the qualifications. Yes. They are true and they are genuine. Okay? The, it, that is really a prerequisite mm -hmm. and very important for the agent. Uh, the schools that we are taking children there, they have the prerogative to even get into contact with the bank and find out is this genuine or is it not genuine. Mm -hmm. So there are, there, are, there are procedures and mechanisms in place okay. to make sure that that happens. Mm -hmm. Now the challenge comes in when maybe you're dealing with agents that are not truthful to what they're doing. Okay, Because if, if the, the, the gatekeeper, so to speak, which is the company that you're dealing with, they are not truthful in what they are doing. Because the essence of what we do, in all honesty, it's not about education. It's about the destiny of that human being. Because it's life-changing. It can be life-changing. It can also be very devastating mm -hmm. if the right information is not disseminated to the parents. Mm -hmm. The other thing is that it's important that we realize not everybody is going to qualify to come to Australia. Even with parents, it is important for us to understand that, you know, you're sending your child somewhere where there are specific needs that needs to be met. Mm -hmm. In essence, what I'm saying is that it's a collaborative uh, process. Okay, So the, the Australian government is very strong in making sure that we have genuine students coming to Australia. Okay. Okay? Uh, and part of that process is to make sure that there is financial capacity, people have the right uh, qualifications, and that they deserve to be there. Mm -hmm. uh, so there are those checks and balances. Now, sometimes that will pass through the cracks, so yes. to speak. Um, however, I would have to say that, um, for example, the Australian government even classifies countries in, in categories based on the level of which they feel that there is a risk. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, Right now we're in category three, which means oh, Kenya. Yes, which means we require a lot of documentation in order for the the, the student to be awarded a student visa. All right, yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah. Now a student here wants to go and study in Australia. Yes. Another thing that rose, arose from that conversation was yeah. courses that yeah. kids are going to take yeah. might not even get them to the next stage. For example. You go there and you study. He used an ex uh, anthropology. Yeah. Because he has parents, the end goal for some is to make sure the child ends up in Australia. But if right now we are sending a child to Australia at this particular moment, what would you recommend they go and study? So that they avoid studying for courses that might not take them anywhere. I think it's important for us to understand that uh, we need not have this notion that because I'm going to study there, I'm going to live in Australia. Mm -hmm. That's really important because the essence of a student visa is for you to go and get education. Yes. And in fact, the process is such that you need to show the Australian government that you'll be coming back to Kenya, mm -hmm. okay, and how that will benefit you as an individual. You know, it's what we call uh, a genuine student, a genuine entrance mm -hmm. to, into Australia. So you need to prove to the Australian government and the institution that I'm a genuine student. I'm spending all this money to invest in education because I'll have a good return when I come back home. Okay. Now, having said that, yes, sometimes the Australian government has the opportunity, if you've studied in Australia, there is a pathway whereby then you can get a residency and work in Australia. Mm -hmm. So it's really important for us to understand that fundamentally, when you get the student visa, you're going there to study and you're expected to come back? 
to your country. To your country. But there is also an opportunity, depending sometimes the, the government looks and analyzes the kind of skill set that they require. And if you've studied in Australia and in a particular skill set, then there could be an opportunity for you to take on residency. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's really important okay. for us to understand. Yes. Now, when it comes to what you want to study, personally, I would say, it's really important to study something that really is valuable to you as a human being, as an individual. Beautiful. Okay? Uh, why do I say that? Because from a perspective of wanting to be successful, it is not a prerequisite for somebody to do accounting for them to be successful. Yes. Okay? Yes. There are many accountants who are not successful. Yes. There are doctors who are not successful. Mm. There are doctors who are successful. Yes. So the career path you choose is the career path that you really feel, this is what I really want to do. Passionate that about Passionate about it. Because in life, what you're passionate about, you put energy into it and you're going to succeed. Yes. Okay? You see, the problem sometimes as human beings is that we want to do X because somebody has done it. Or but there's value in yeah. that. Or, or, or you think that Monetary because, value. Yeah. Yeah. So it's really important for, uh, I know sometimes it's difficult for a young person to make a decision with, it, with regards to where they, they're going to go in, in, in many years. But at least make the decision now and make the decision that is yours. Mm -hmm. Okay? So uh, look at what am I endowed in? Am I endowed in sciences? Am I endowed in w what kind of uh, uh, career path would I want to take? <laughs> because in essence, the truth is, whatever career path one chooses, you can be successful. Got I love that. Okay. I love that. Mm -hmm. Okay, you mm -hmm. can be successful. Uh, and let us choose the career path, whether it's going to be in Kenya, whether it's going to be in Australia, that we have that opportunity that we really want to pursue. Because the truth is, mm -hmm. when you have a strong reason for something, all of us as human beings, when we have a strong reason for something, is it true that we always find a way to achieve it? So, for example, Lynn, and... Uh, you know, I've, I've met you in the last yes. one week or so. Yes. But let me ask you this question. Is it true that every time you made a decision about something that you really wanted, although you didn't know how to get it, is it true that you always got it? Absolutely. So what does that tell you? It tells you that the most important thing is for us to make the right decision with which career path that mm -hmm. we want to take. Obviously, if you look at the global scale of where maybe opportunities are, I would say opportunities in IT, opportunities in engineering, opportunities in accounting, opportunities in anything that is health related, yes. uh, opportunities that uh, uh, health related, uh, engineering, IT, yeah. uh, agriculture, mm -hmm. you know, yes. uh, hospitality. Uh, there are lots of opportunities mm -hmm. uh, in, in that, in that, in that re respect. However, let us also truly understand that coming and studying those things does not necessarily mean that the Australian government guarantees you're going to get residence. Now let's talk about that. Yeah. Do you think yeah. a lot of parents, their expectation yeah. is to have their students or their children study in Australia, yeah. expecting them to get jobs there? Because we talked about black tax as well. Yeah. It's not more about I'm taking you to go to school. It's about the byproduct that comes with me taking you to go to school. Do you think as parents here, our expectations are too much on the children? Because some of the emails and the feedback I've gotten is, I went there, I got a job, and I have to send money to my parents. It's like, you going to study is okay. That's not our main concern. It's what comes after you study. Do you think this is what is giving these kids a lot of stress? Because they always know, I have to study, get a job, and support my family back at home. Yeah, I think uh, uh, it's, it's important for us to understand, yes, Australia does give students yeah. the opportunity to work. Uh, and there are some wonderful advantages ad, uh, that come as a result of that. Uh, there's the aspect of uh, responsibility, you're managing s your small mm -hmm. money, uh, it can subsidize, but it is not meant to be in, in substitution yes. to you having the capacity and the capability to pay school fees. Okay? So that opportunity, sometimes uh, uh, students are able to really take good care of themselves, mm -hmm. which is a good thing. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's a good thing. However, on the same token, you have to make sure that you pursue your studies. Okay. Because one of the premise with regards to Australian government is that, yes, we are going to allow you to make sure that you work a certain number of hours. It's restricted. It is 40 hours a fortnight uh, when college is on. And then when the college is not on, when you're on holidays, then you can work as much as you want. Okay. okay? Mm -hmm. And that has been for many years. Mm -hmm. It's not started now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, that, that provision has been yes. there. Yes. However, 
from a parent perspective, I think, yes, it's good if a student goes there and they are able to maybe send something home. That is okay, so long as they are not compromising what was the main agenda for them to mm -hmm. go there. And there are good examples of Kenyans that have done that. But again, I go back to the premise that we are not all the same. Yes. The way I manage myself might be very different from the way Tom manages themselves. Yes. Okay? So it's really important for parents, first and foremost, what's the key thing for the kid to go there? It's really to study. Because if they don't study and they, they don't pursue their studies, mm. then they are going to be deported back to Kenya. <laughs> And that's a, and a that's wonderful a thing. That's a wonderful thing that the Australian government does, in my opinion, because at the end of the day, we took this kid there to study. And once they finish their studies, that is really when that we can start saying, you know, you've qualified, you, you, you've done well, maybe you can assist us in mm -hmm. one way or the other. Mm -hmm. And that comes again from the genesis of the way the situation is in Kenya. I can understand parents, they are desperate, they want their kids to be successful. It's true, and I, I, I stand to be corrected, that the opportunities for young people in Kenya is limited. It's true. It's really No, limited. actually, it's a fact. It's a fact. Yes. So when we have an opportunity where somebody can go and study and maybe an opportunity maybe to settle, I think it's important that we safeguard that and we follow the guidelines that mm. are given. Because in my own humble opinion, like I said, we went to Australia, we were about 20. I am so grateful for the opportunity that Australia gave me because I've been able to come back home. I've been able to have an impact on people back home. The people who've come to Australia, the 2,000 or whatever, the 3,000 that are in Adelaide, definitely, I would say at least 95% of those people, they're making an impact back mm. home, okay? So Australia has done a wonderful thing for us as Kenyans to give us that opportunity because there are very limited opportunities here for the young people. However, it is our prerogative to make sure that we manage that in the right way, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, and not really be pushed by being really desperate because I think part, part of why people become, when people are desperate, they also become vulnerable. Yes. They become vulnerable in the sense that I've had parents come to my office and they've been called a million shillings and the kid did not go anywhere, which is really sad because these are limited people with limited resources. They felt that, you know, we are being, you know, directed in the right way and <laughs> they've been conned. Mm. So uh, I can understand, you know, people who are desperate. It's very easy for them to be manipulated. However, let us just take a step back and make sure that we do some bit of research. You know, information today in today's world is really available. Yes, it yes, is really available. Yes. Do a bit of research and uh, uh, we all don't, might not have a bucket of money there, mm. but if we plan ourselves well, if we plan ourselves well, I would have to say that if we plan ourselves well, we do the due diligence, we look at our children, Australia is a wonderful place to go. Okay. All right. Let's go back now to the students. Yes. What are the chances of, what are the chances of getting a job once you finish school in Australia? The chances are high. Again, mm. it depends on what kind of profession that we yes. are in because, you know, de depending on the way the, the, the market is, the economy is, uh, the, there would be demands of certain professions and, mm -hmm. and sometimes not. So, for example, when I went there, accounting was a really high yes. sort of uh, uh, profession. Uh, anybody who either went there as an accountant or mm. came there and called in fact, even my brother-in-law, he came there and studied accounting. My mm. sister came there and studied accounting. They both yeah. are doing very well. Uh, then after some years, accounting was not part of the skills in demand. Uh, why? Because we had enough accountants. Mm. And then recently, accounting again has come as part of the skills in, in demand. Mm. So I'm giving an example of it, yes. it's not something that is set in sun. It varies. It varies. But I would have to say that there are certain sectors or certain aspects of the economy where we are always kind of needing people. For example, in the health sector, we have wonderful nurses that have done marvelous things mm -hmm. in Australia, mm -hmm. you know, and they have a good name even within the Australian community. And this is the aspect of Kenyans that is wonderful that we also need to articulate yes. and, and talk about. Yes. So the health sector, uh, IT sector, for example, uh, engineering sector, uh, anything that is science related, mm -hmm. teachers, for example, people who are coming there to, to, yes. to, to study teaching, mm -hmm. uh, there would be opportunities. But again, we are talking about three years down the track. Yes. You know, in life, the only thing that we know is constant is change. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if you if you analyze certain professions the chances of getting uh, 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 a transition from a student to uh, to to an, a yes. skilled migrant or a resident it, it will be determined by what is happening within the economy and like i said most of the people that have uh, 
uh, settled in Australia, majority of them have come there as students, mm. and then they've taken on the opportunity for residence. Okay. So in essence, in a nutshell, what I'm saying is that there are opportunities, but however, it is dynamic. Yes. Okay. Um, and uh, it's wonderful that the op opportunity is there for post-study work visa for students who, who come, mm -hmm. they, they study study disciplines, and then they have the opportunity to okay. study. Now, they, they could get opportunities mm. in Australia to live on, like most of them have, but also they could bring back to Kenya the skill set that they've learned because you, you're learning in a developed world, we do things differently, and it is an asset for the, for the because there are quite a number of Kenyans mm. that decide, yes, I've studied, I'm, I'm taking back, back home. home, which is a wonderful thing. We yes. have quite good examples of alumni mm. from Australia who are here in Kenya and they're doing very well. All right. Yeah. Okay, so another recommendation that was offered by Dr. Albert was have your kids first study here, do their degrees here, and then let them go do their, you know, but, uh, do their masters there. But then again, if today I have my degree, or I have my associate degree in journalism, and I go and study, I want now to advance in Australia, does it count? Yes, it does. Okay. Yeah, you can. I mean, mm. we've, uh, uh, people who are coming to do postgraduate studies yes. and whatever you, you, you worked here mm. and, and studied, when, if you come and do a postgraduate study, if you want to go the skilled migration pathway, yeah. whatever experiences you had would count. But however, I must point this, and really this is really important. In Australia, if you want to come and, and migrate as a skilled migrant, it is always important, again, to get the right advice. Mm. And the right advice can only be given by a migration agent. Yes. Okay? Uh, I'm not a migration agent myself. But our company, we do have migration agents mm -hmm. that work with us mm -hmm. because we are not allowed to give advice in that, in no. that, in that area. Okay. You, know, you see, Australia is a very structured country. If, I s if Australia say you do one, two, three, you're going to get four. Absolutely. If you do that, you're going to get there. Mm. If you veer away from that, then it's very difficult. Yes. Okay? It's a community and a society that is highly organized, uh, so organized that, uh, for example, during COVID, uh, whatever we were told, we did. You know, people, people are really organized. They, they follow, follow orders. Wo orders. We follow yes. what we are told. And again, when the government realizes that something is not going well, they really look into it mm -hmm. and make things uh, you know, work for yes. the betterment of everyone. All right. Yeah. What stands out in studying in Australia? If oh, <laughs> if I go and study journalism there, is it that their education is advanced? Should I just stay home and study the same? Does Kenya offer the same opportunities, the same education? Or why are we spending so much money? Would you say the education system is advanced? I would say that the education system is advanced. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's a first world country. Uh, it's a wealthy country. Yeah. There are a lot of facilities. Uh, it's very, the, the education is very uh, associated with industry. Mm -hmm. uh, you find that, say for example, there are industries that collaborate a lot with yes. universities to make sure that uh, uh, people are not just learning, but they're also having experiential mm -hmm. when it comes to, you know, to furthering their career. So from that perspective, the quality of education, the level of education. They are ahead. They are ahead. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's really good quality education. There's no question about that. To go back to the question of whether children should go uh, to, to Australia after, you know, uh, yes. KCSC, mm -hmm. after they, when they are young, mm. again, I would say it depends on the individual. Because there are some that have been very successful, there are some that it would not be ideal for them, wait for them until maybe they do their first degree, yes. and then they can come and do their their postgraduate uh, And studies. again, yeah. a parent knows their child. Exactly. So you know whether your child will cope yeah. or whether they will not be able to cope. Yeah. Let's talk about the ones who have gone to Australia yeah. and they are not able to cope. Yeah. And the fear of coming back home yeah. is still with them. Yeah. Because then that's now when the conversations of the mental issues, the depression, the suicide, the suicide all these things that come by, are there people actually struggling mentally in Australia? I mean, first and foremost, let me qualify this. Yes. It's not just in Australia. Yes. Okay? Uh, people worldwide, irrespective of where we are, these are challenges that we face on a day-to-day -day basis. Absolutely. It's not, uh, I'm sure, it's even not, an, part, Australian it's not thing. an Australian thing. Yes. It is a, a, a concern for everybody around the mm -hmm. world. Um, so it's important that we understand that, yes. that uh, you know, because somebody is in Australia, they cannot go through those challenges, yes. okay? The first and foremost, I would say the most important thing is to acknowledge that I have a problem. You, you know, we have kind of stigmatized people when they have uh, mental health issues. And I would say it's really important for people mm. to be open, uh, to acknowledge it, yes. because 
it's a disease or it could be a situation i call it a disease in quotes anyway yes. like anything else you know so and there are ways and means that it can be addressed okay uh, that's number one number two most institutions, I would say almost all institutions in Australia, they do have opportunities for international students, basically department that handles international students and if they are vulnerable and in, in that regard they are mm. depressed or they, 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 they are having those, those for things. Real? Oh yes, absolutely. Oh, oh. Absolutely. Absolutely. Those facilities are there because the welfare of the student is really important to that mm. institution, mm. you know. So, uh, again, it's being in a situation whereby we are open enough and wanting to get help. Yes. Okay. The other thing, and this is, well, I, I'm privileged in, in yeah. one sense, yeah. uh, having dealt with people in, in personal development, coaching, training and mentoring. Uh, one of the key things that we do is that we want to empower our children that come personally. I do make sure that uh, we have sessions with our, with our kids, mm. the kids that come. Mm -hmm. What are these sessions about? Is how do we navigate through problems? That's number one. Number two, make them free, free to come to us and talk to us. You have that. Oh, right? yes, we do have. Okay. Uh, the students that we bring through our organization. Mm -hmm. One of the key things, because for me, uh, coming from the background that I did come from, I never knew anything about personal development. And when I read that book, Unlimited Power, by Tony Robbins, it opened my world. And you see, you can only do things based on the knowledge that you have. Yes. Okay. People don't do what they do because they know. They do what they do because that's all they know. Yes. Okay. So it's really important for, mm -hmm. for, from my perspective to empower anybody that comes into my life. I want to empower them and for them to understand it's not a weakness to ask for help. It's not a weakness to get coaching. It's not a weakness. It's a strength. Okay, so we we have sessions with, with the young people once every three months. We we come. We have a loud table. We have a meal together. I want them to feel comfortable. To feel comfortable to share with us mm. any issues that they might mm -hmm. face. And then you know we chat. You know what are you facing? What challenges are you facing? This is the way because it is not what happens in life. It is what we do as a result of what happens in life True. that is really important. True. Okay. However, you have to be able to think that way. So. Yes. Um, Th that's one avenue that we do. I would also say that the Kenya Association of South Australia is an avenue that especially Kenyan students uh, should maybe approach if they have any issues. If you approach any of the officials of CASA, definitely, because we have a very community that is willing to help. Mm. Okay, we, They will help. They will do things that are necessary to assist you in any way, shape of, uh, okay. uh, or form to so navigate through that. Mm, so apart from your organization, yeah. given that you are former president of CASA, yeah. how would you know students or young people from Kenya who are in Australia are struggling? Do you have like student leaders? Do you have people who report to you about the issues that those who can't now reach to you, those you can't have the round table discussions yeah. with, do you, are you aware of what's happening to so the rest of the yeah, young so people? Yeah, that's a good question. To answer your question, mm. CASA has a student representative, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, the student representative is meant to articulate any of the issues and students to really be yes. in a position to, 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 to go through that pathway and seek for help. Uh, we also have various forums, uh, you, you, WhatsApp forums, uh, Kenya Association of South Australia, people in the north, people in the mm -hmm. south, whereby you know people chat. And even as a community, if we notice anybody who has a problem, you'll notice that the Kenyan community will say, there is this person, they have this kind of challenge, let's come together and mm -hmm. assist them. Okay. So I think maybe the key here is, uh, uh, again, with every challenge comes in an opportunity. Yes. Maybe we might need to look at you know how can we make this better how can we make this opportunity better such that any student who is coming to Australia for example and specifically to Adelaide they have an awareness that these are where if I have this kind of challenge this is where I need to go I this is where I need to go I and so and that begins with we as as uh, as as, as, as uh, student uh, counselors or agents, education agents, you know that could be something that all all agents who are in the industry would have the opportunity. You know, you're going to Australia. If you get there, this is Casa. This is you know these are avenues where you can get mm -hmm. some help. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, okay, like I said, it's for me it's a unique situation because I'm involved in personal yes. development. Uh, however, not everybody is in that. However, we do know agents mm. who are in the industry and they are 
the right kind of agents to go to, they would have that opportunity to tell you, if you have this problem, this is what you need mm. to do. I think, uh, thank you for that, even yeah. for reminding me, because I think in my conversation yesterday with the current president of CASA, yeah. I was telling him, are uh, even people aware this CASA? Because, yeah. you know, when you are visiting countries for the first time, there's so many things you are handling. You are handling a new environment, the culture, the school, the books, the people. Do you know where to go? And I feel like that should actually be put out there so that people know if you are coming to South, South Australia, there is CASA and this is who you can talk to. These are the helpline, you know, contact details that are available for you so that even parents, even we are able to do this right now because we are in Nairobi, but my my heart goes to a parent who is in the roots of, you know, Trukana, but they want the best for their kids. Who can they call even when they are not able to get hold of their child? Yeah. yeah and I feel like that should be, uh, there is a lot of awareness yeah. that needs to be done. It's because young people might also fear. So there yeah. should also be an anonymous email there yeah. for someone who is going through something, but they don't want to be open about it. Yeah. Can they even get therapy? Does CASA have therapists? Uh, I think, uh, uh, like I said, uh, even within the institutions, mm -hmm. the institutions that students would be going to. But you know those institutions now there. You know, Jua, mimi kikutana na weka John. Yeah. Uniambie, eh, lead me na ito a John. Yeah. Uh, can, there's something that happens with talking to someone from home yeah. you, rather than talking to before you adapt to this other person yeah. there should be someone who can make you feel a bit relaxed I'm thinking yes uh, and like I said they, mm. we do have a student rep in casa yes. uh, uh, and that's probably uh, what I would say it's it's the soft learning I'm not mm. saying that uh, uh, you just direct somebody to go, uh, you make it, uh, what, I, what would I call it, soft landing, mm. you know, uh, educate people that are coming, uh, you know, there's this opportunity that, you know, we, we could sort your issue by going this pathway uh, and directing them and walking with them through that pathway. Um, the other thing that I really wanted to allude to that uh, just before it, yes. it, it gets out of my yeah. mind is that... Uh, Again, I talked about the where we are getting information and the agents that we are yes. dealing with. It is, you see, when you're dealing with a good, the, the recognized agents that are licensed, they have the opportunity to give you all that information. And when you're coming to Australia, meet the child at the airport, show them this is what you need to do, this is where you need to mm -hmm. go, this is where you get a bus, mm -hmm. uh, maybe even organize accommodation before you come there. So yes. those opportunities are there. Okay, uh, when you're dealing with, like I said, with, with the, right. the right the right kind of mm, people, they mm. should be able to advise you because uh, it's part and parcel of what we are there to do, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and part of that guidance is also making sure that the, the child is also comfortable, that, uh, you know, if, if I have a problem, I can call so and so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because I believe CASA is very big. So for me, maybe my suggestion would be to have an in-house professor, someone who is well aware matters mental health, yeah. because that way I get having a student leader is easy. I mean, I'm not coming to talk to another student <laughs> about my <laughs> issues. Like, yeah. even if I tell you I'm stressed, you yeah. wouldn't understand my level of stress. Yeah. My level of stress can be suicidal. My level of stress can actually be very yeah. big. But to touch a it's student leaders yeah. and whatever. But if they have a professional yeah. inside CASA yeah. who is able to even do virtual, yeah. you know, sessions yeah. with people who are feeling overwhelmed, yeah. Yeah. then that might also be a solution because rehabs, I, 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 I hadn't verified that, but he, uh, Dr. Albert also alluded to the fact that we have a lot of young people in rehabs. Is that a fact? I honestly don't know, and I cannot comment yes. on that um, because uh, I, I really, I, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, maybe the, the best place person who could maybe answer that question would be maybe the current president of mm -hmm, CASA. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they have something that, based yes. on that, that information, yeah. I think they're looking into it. Mm -hmm. um, and in addition to that, I would say it's a great idea what you've suggested, which, uh, you know, maybe this, this conversation has created the opportunity for CASA yes. to look at that particular broader spectrum. Mm -hmm. How can we engage somebody who is, who is uh, a professional that can help people who are having... Yes. Uh, and I'll, I'll definitely, I think, I think John has been in touch with you. So yes, yesterday. it might be a good idea. I didn't good pass idea. that to him, but yeah. I'll write to him yeah. also. Yeah, because yes. you see, like, like fundamentally, whenever we have challenges... 
we have opportunities there for solutions. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So it, it's maybe uh, an opportunity mm. also for, mm. for, 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 us as, or for, for us as Kenyan community, as CASA, to relook. Uh, and even for people like us who are in, in business, and really look, how can we make this better? How can we make sure that we, nav we help navigate mm. uh, you know, people so that they can take advantage of the opportunity that is there? I'm very huge on matters mental health. Even yeah. here we have a resident therapist. Like I'm very much, I, I advocate for mental, because I'm sitting with these young people, yeah. and I can see sometimes all they need. You know, generations are different. But if we continue looking at them, that's not how we cre create or bring around solutions. So if they have an in-house therapist or few counselors, for me that would really be. Yeah. But, but how is the social life in Australia though? Oh, it's terrific <laughs> in my opinion. Uh, that's one dish yeah. I'll never touch. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I think uh, uh, in my own humble opinion, it's, it's a wonderful, mm. wonderful opportunity. It's a good country. Uh, yes. I've been very, very lucky. Uh, and, uh, you know, I'm very thankful uh, because since going to Australia, I've been privileged to travel to very many countries mm. around the world. Mm. And uh, in my own humble opinion, whether it's Europe, uh, I've visited most of Europe, the US, uh, most of Asia. Yeah. Uh, in my own humble opinion, Australia, to me, is still one of the best countries to live in the world. Beautiful. And I look at it from a holistic perspective. Yes. Uh, when I say holistic perspective is uh, the opportunities that people get. In, in, my, in my own estimation, uh, human beings sometimes, uh, we have a tendency to discriminate. Mm. What I would say is that that happens across the board in all communities, whether it's Kenyan community, overseas community. But my experience of that from a, an Australian context yes. is very minimal. Yeah. And um, uh, I, I don't want to seem to be... I, I say this in all humility. Yes. Okay? Um, we have three children. And um, the opportunity that arose when we went to Australia um, gave our children wonderful opportunities. Uh, Lynn, uh, yes. specifically, I was po all, all th the three kids are doing well. Uh, but one who does something that they always were passionate about is Bruce Kamau, who mm. our son is Bruce Kamau, yeah. the second born. He became the first Kenyan to play professional football in Australia. Really? Yes. Oh, He's still playing professional football. Um, and uh, that's what I mean, the opportunities that we, we, we have in Australia. If, if it was most likely maybe another situation, he would not be doing yes. what he's doing. Yes. I mean, you spoke with Emily, uh, yes. you know, the oh. daughter has been playing tennis yes. uh, ever since she was a kid. Mm. Uh, we have a lot of people, uh, Kenyans who have come there, studied, we have engineers, we have doctors, accountants. Uh, and the wonderful, beautiful thing is that majority of them work in the profession that they, 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 they are passionate, they are passionate about. about. Mm. Um, Lifestyle-wise, it's a good country. Uh, I mean, we are talking over a continent that has 26 million people. Uh, lifestyle, the way people live, it's wonderful. Uh, the infrastructure, the support structures, mm. uh, the health se sector. Uh, so when you look at all that in, in combination, I would say, that's why I say to me, and that's my opinion anyway, yes. you know, we are all entitled to, to sometimes having different yes. opinions. Yeah. It's the best country to it's live in. It is. Um, you know, um, I'll just <laughs> give this as an example. Yeah. Um, and uh, again, with all humility, yes. um, I think it was last year uh, I was here in Kenya because I do come here yes. quite often. And uh, my my wife and my daughter they, they needed to go for a, for a, for a wedding ceremony, mm -hmm. and we are talking of um, over nine hundred kilometers. Yes. Uh, and uh, two ladies, they hop in a car about six p.m. in the evening, and they drive through the night from Adelaide all the way to Melbourne. And that's testimony, in my opinion, yeah. of the kind of society that we are living in. Mm. You know, the security to have the guts to, to be able to drive. You have to stop. You have to rest. Uh, so that gives you an insight as to the kind of community that we are talking about yeah. or the kind of country. Uh, having said that, yeah. I would also say that uh, um, every country has its challenges. It does not mean that it's all rosy. You know, there are, are going to be challenges. Again, for me, challenges are a wonderful way yeah, of life okay. because ultimately, the only person who doesn't have a challenge, they're six feet under. 
So when life throws challenges at us, it is really important for us to ask ourselves some pertinent question. And the first question to ask ourselves is, what's great about this? Mm. What can I learn from this? Yes. And how can I make it better? Yes. Okay? Because in my opinion, life is about, or, or thinking is about asking the right questions. Mm. If you ask the right questions, you're going to get the right answers. Yes. And like I said again, I cannot really overemphasize this. As human beings, we have been given the faculty of thinking. If you think about where we are now here, everything that we see right now was once a thought in a human being. True. Is that true? True, true? So, is there a limit to the thoughts we can have? No. So, is there a limit to what we can have? No. However, we were never taught this in school. I don't know anybody who went to school and they are taught how to think and how to navigate through life. So, uh, when we talk about young people, and I'm very passionate about young mm. people, uh, it's important for us to empower them, for them to understand that nothing can stop you. Yes. Okay? So long as you do the right things, then right things have to happen to you. But if you don't do the right things, don't expect right things to happen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, okay? Mm -hmm. And sometimes as human beings, we want to take shortcuts. But okay? Uh, in my own humble opinion, they don't work. Mm. Because there are certain universal laws. And whether we understand those laws or not, they are always going to be in operation. Mm -hmm. If I take this cup and drop it, what will happen? There's gravity. Yes. It, will, it will crack. Yes. Certainly, there are certain laws that if we really learn to navigate through life with those laws, mm. then life is joyful. It's joyful. I can't let you go before asking about the tax. Yeah. Do you enjoy paying taxes in Australia? Do the taxes work for you? I love paying. Uh, let me answer <laughs> it this way. Um, would you rather pay more tax or no tax? Right now? Yeah. Right now as lean? Yeah. <laughs> would you rather pay more tax or less tax? Less tax, of course. Okay. I would say I would rather pay more tax. If you know where it's going. Okay. Let me elaborate what uh, I mean by that. Yes. Now. If I'm paying more tax, it means I'm earning way much more. Yeah. Okay? That's, that's first. Yes. Secondly, why I don't mind paying taxes in Australia is because I can see where those taxes are going. There's nothing wrong with paying taxes so long as we see where the taxes are going. Good. I'll give you an example. Personal example. I don't normally share this, but I will share this for you too. So that I can paint a picture. And this is not just about Australia. It can also happen here in Kenya. Mm. In 2010, I had an interesting health challenge. I had a heart attack. Oh. And um, I didn't know that I was having a heart attack. And uh, I stayed in the house for about three days. And uh, my wife, I mean, men, we are interesting yes. in the way sometimes we think. My wife is telling me, you've got to go to hospital, go to hospital. I said, no, I'll be okay, I'll be okay. Uh, it called for my business partner, uh, Stan, his name is. He called me, he's a pharmacist and a very successful business in, uh, businessman in Australia. And he called me and said, John, what's happening? You know, we've never seen you sick. Because uh, I think one of the key fundamentals in life is to be healthy. Mm -hmm. You know, we are going to live in this body anyway. anyway. So you might just as well do the most important thing about this body, to live in a healthy mm. body. So anyhow... Uh, Stan calls and I said, okay, I'll, 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 I'll go to the GP. We go to the GP. They're trying to find out what's the problem, what's the problem. They can't find out what's the problem. Then I find myself surrounded with three physicians. Then all of a sudden they say, let's do an ECG. And lo and behold, I was having a heart attack. Now, uh, because maybe of, of the way I've trained myself, uh, you know, I said, well, people would ask me, they call an ambulance mm -hmm. and I'm on the ambulance. They say, you know, how are you? I say, I'm wonderful. And it looked like it was a bit strange for me to say I'm wonderful. But however, my, my position was, I'm in good hands. Anyway, whether I cry about it or not, there's nothing I can do about mm -hmm. it. See the situation for what it is. I'm in good hands. All will be well. The reason why I'm telling that story is that I was taken to Royal Ad Adelaide Hospital, which is a government hospital. So it's government run. Um, and the kind of care and diligence that they did, unbelievable. And it's a government. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Today I would say to you, uh, well, they, they have now a new Royal yes. Adelaide Hospital. And that hospital, when it was being built, was the most expensive hospital in the southern, uh, south, southern hemisphere, both in terms of equipment, yes. in terms of facilities. And it's a government hospital. Mm. Because I believe that 
the taxes are being driven in the right way, such that anybody who is unwell, irrespective of whether you have money or not, you have access to good health. Good. You have access to good education, and you should have access to mm. good shelter. Yeah. So is that possible in Kenya? Of course it is possible. If somebody else can do it, we can do it. We can do it. Yeah. However, that's why I'm so passionate about Australia. It's not just... Uh, uh, it's, it's the whole composites of, of, of the health style, uh, I mean lifestyle, sorry, that it accords people who mm, live there. Mm. Uh, and uh, as Kenyans, if we have that opportunity, That's it's cool. important that we, 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 we take the opportunity if it is there and respect that opportunity. Mm. You know, uh, Kenya and Australia, I think to me, as, as, as people who are living there, we should be good ambassadors of the two countries, mm. you know, both Australia. Because even Kenya is a beautiful country. We have yes. wonderful things here. Uh, we also have our own challenges. However, if we blend the two, uh, we definitely come up with, with brilliant mm. uh, opportunities mm -hmm. for all of us. We can borrow a lot yeah. from Australia. Yeah. I have loved Australia since I knew Australia. Yeah. To be honest, my main goal was to come there next year. Yeah. I hope we make it there. But I feel like there are actually great opportunities for people to go and explore. But I feel like even as you explore those opportunities, don't forget yourself in the process. My take home is follow your passion. Yeah. Follow your passion. And I feel like that's actually a call to so many parents. Because sometimes parents, we are wired to tell our kids what we think as parents is right. Go do law, do medicine. And it comes from a good place. But times are changing. Your son is a professional footballer. I'm sure if you didn't give him an opportunity to live his life and do what he's passionate about, right now he would be, with all due respect, an accountant somewhere saying, Dad, why did you make me do, do this? I feel like parents should actually let their kids practice what they're passionate about. Yeah, maybe... Let me really emphasize that. Mm. You see, and, and uh, I learned this from Kahil, Kahil Kibran. Kibran. Yeah. Wonderful poet of many years ago. Yes. And Kahil said, children come through you, but not for you. There you go. Okay. As parents, it is our obligation to create an environment for the children that we have been blessed to have to be whatever they choose to be. Sometimes a very difficult concept because we have our own preconceived yes, ideas. Yes. But the truth is, every human being, this is according to me, every human being has a mission to fulfill. And it is not up to us to determine that mission. So for example, in you are born in the family you are born in. Why weren't you born in another family? Mm. Why weren't you born in Australia or China or Japan? Mm. Why? Because in my own thinking is that there's a reason why. And that reason is how we is is the reason why we navigate life mm. and we get propelled to certain yes. certain certain aspects. Yes. If we have young children here, let's say we have five kids here, mm. young ones, mm. let's say maybe two three years, and we just observe them and leave them, you will notice after some time that they will be doing some particular things yes. that the other one is not doing. Mm. And that in and of itself, it's inherent in in the human being that there is something that that particular human being, if they follow that pathway, they're going to be successful. They're going to be successful. Yeah. One thing that I would like to also allude mm. is what is success? Because uh, as human beings, we have what I would call uh, wrong identity. Mm -hmm. We identify with the things we have. And when those things are not there, then we become miserable. Mm -hmm. That's wrong identity because I am not the car I drive. I'm not the home that I live in. I'm not this body. I'm not my mind. I am more than that. I know this is quite deep, but the truth is when we stop identifying with the things that we are not, life is beautiful. That's number one. Number two, in my own estimation, success is not about how many things that I have. Success to me is how joyful I am. With the things yes. that you have. Because Life is not about achieving to be happy. Life is achieving happily. Mm, I love that one. Okay, because whether I want a house, yes. whether I want to get married, whether I want to drive a wonderful car, the reason why I want all those things is because of what I think that will mm -hmm. make me feel. But I don't think need those things mm -hmm. to feel good. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm. so ultimately, and, and we can even look at life as an example. Yes. A two-year-old, 
They are joyful irrespective. Yes. Then as we grow, oh, being joyful becomes yes. a, a whole issue. You know, we attach our joy with various things. Mm. You know, uh, if my son is a doctor, I'm joyful. If my son is uh, a carpenter, I'm, I'm not sure. joyful. Come on. Really, let us learn to appreciate yes. that. Oh, as human beings, we all have different talents. We mm -hmm. all have something to give. And ultimately, ultimately, it is my responsibility to make sure that I become the best version of myself. Good. God, I feel like away from Australia, there is a conversation we were meant to have yeah. and we can always speak it next time. Yeah. You are full of great words, not just words, but it's because you've actioned them. Someone can see you live what you say. You are not just people who use, you know, the big words and it's someone can actually see it in you. And I feel like you would honestly come through for a show and teach our audience one or two threes when we come to Australia. That's a conversation I would love to have, personal development, seeing yourself more than what you have, the things you aspire, you know, all these things that we imagine will make us better people. They drain the joy out of you because you're not rejoicing the moment. Your mind is constantly on the future, the future, not knowing this today was also future for someone. But once it's there, we don't rejoice our present. We are constantly thinking, what do I need to do? And that's something I stopped doing a long time ago. You practice gratitude with the things that you have and the rest will follow. You know, life is not supposed to be hard. Life is easy. You know, life is actually supposed to be very easy. Like we shouldn't strain even our mind. Life is supposed to be easy. And I hope people get that book, The Prophet by Galil Gibran. I read it a long time ago. It's one of my personal favorites. Yeah. And I feel if people get that book, then they'll be able to experience life and experience it in a gratitude space. Yeah. So thank you for coming. I feel like we've gotten the clarification we need. I feel like now more parents will actually send their kids to Australia but knowing yeah. how to yeah. and the best you know you mentioned about an agent and uh, you mentioned about your business that yeah. deals with taking uh, students also yeah. to Australia yeah. and I know part of what our audience will do will now want to know the name yeah. are you comfortable giving the name I'm comfortable okay. uh, our, our organization is Lisa Beam International mm -hmm. uh, Lisa Beam International Education Services yes uh, we have an office in uh, Westland mm -hmm. uh, Reliance Center uh, we are on fourth floor mm -hmm. Um, yeah, we are always happy to help okay. uh, those people. We, we, we believe that, uh, like I said, it's really not just about education. Mm. It's, a, it's a destiny mm -hmm. of, of a human being. Mm -hmm. So we, we always want to be as thorough as possible yes. uh, and assist as much as possible. Mm. Um, my philosophy in life is that uh, my success is based on your success. Yes. If we can help you to be successful, then we've done our job. Mm. It's a profound journey when even if it's one person, that you have a little bit of input because we can't change human beings, but we can help influence human beings mm. to be the best version that they can be. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And by all means, if you come to Australia, I'm always happy to have the conversation. Uh, it is important also for, for me to say that uh, I'm not perfect. I learn every day. Uh, I'm always open to learning. Mm, mm. Uh, I believe in life. It's a constant and never-ending improvement journey. Yes. Uh, so um, to give you an example, uh, since those days that I read Tony Robbins Unlimited Power, I read every day. Wow. What are you currently reading? Uh, currently, I'm reading uh, a book called Mystics mm. uh, by uh, an Indian uh, mystic. Yes. Because uh, I, I, like, I love, you know, really understanding the human, mm -hmm. the human being, the human psychology, mm. uh, what causes us to do what we, we do. Yes. Uh, and I don't think we ever stop learning. No, we you don't. Know, it's, it's a never-ending journey. It's a never-ending So ending. when you come to Australia, yes. we would love to uh, welcome you there. Yeah. We have a wonderful community in yes. SA. Yes. Uh, even in other parts of Australia. Yeah. Uh, obviously, because I've always lived in Australia. Yeah. In Adelaide, in I Adelaide. love Adelaide. Yes. Uh, you are loyal to Adelaide. <laughs> I, I love it. <laughs> yes. And I also love Kenya. That's yeah. why I keep coming here. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Very we are good. happy to have you. Yeah. And thank you once again for making time. Yeah. I believe we will have our conversation someday in Australia. Yeah. Those are conversations I really love. Even if it's not for the audience, for myself. Yeah. I love anything personal development I love anything that is going to take me from this place to the next place not physically but yeah. mentally yeah. they say imagination is more important than 
knowledge. That's all about instinct. Yes, yes, it's very powerful. Yeah. It's yeah. very powerful, yeah. you know. Yeah. Asante sana. Karibu. But before I let you go, because I know you are also a dad, mm. what parenting advice do you have for parents out there? Uh, my, my own parental advice would mm. be, number one, uh, is that have as few rules as possible. That might seem, seem to be strange. Uh, the only rule I ever had with mm. my children is that be honest to me. Be truthful. If you go out there and do something, just come to me. Because I want us to have that conversation. So the first thing is that, uh, uh, you know, have as few... When I say rules, I mean let's empower our children with what is dangerous. Mm. But let us allow them to be the best version of themselves. Mm. Um, by not because for example if i say to you lynn don't think about the yellow elephant don't think about the yellow elephant what are you thinking about the yellow, the elephant? yellow elephant because the mind cannot process a negative mm. okay so that's why the premise of have as few rules as possible mm. okay secondly understand that children come through us but they are not for us ours is to give an enabling environment for them to become the best version of themselves mm -hmm. and in that comes you know, your expectations, whatever, because wh what we have as parents is that we have a tendency to think, I, w I should have been better, but I was not. But maybe I'll make my, parent, my, my kids better by them being X, Y, Z. I mean, in my own estimation, that's where the, the challenge comes in. But if we provide them with the best environment for them to be the best that they can mm -hmm. be, and that will vary from yeah. parents to parents, yes. from circumstances to circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, again, that is really important. Mm -hmm. The third most important quality is that for us to understand, children don't listen to what we say. They look at what we do. So the best example to be a parent yes. is to be the best version of yourself mm. because that's the way they learn. They are watching yeah. and they are learning. Yes. Yes. Thank yeah. you so much Karibu. for passing by. Say a huge hello to your family yes. and our people. Our uh, We have a very strong support system in Australia. Yeah. I acknowledge they are in our analytics. They are top 10. They watch our content and I acknowledge that and I just want to say thank you but I hope right now we've gotten a couple of details here and there. I want our kids to go out there and be successful but I want them to be successful in their right mental state yeah. and I believe opportunities are out there. I say these things are given to us to enjoy. All the beautiful things in life were given to us by God to enjoy. There is yeah. no limit yeah. to what you can be able to achieve as an individual. And I want our kids to be able to achieve that, you know. Yeah. And let them rest also. Kidogo too. Before, I know they gotta pay the bills. I know the fundraising was done. They have to give back the money, but let them rest. Let them go to H&M and buy themselves a pair of shoes and feel good about themselves. Yeah. And then once they feel good about themselves, they'll automatically send the money back home, you know. Yeah. So I wish you all the very best. I ac uh, I appreciate you taking your time. It's been beautiful having this conversation. Thank you. Say bye-bye to our audience. Thank you very much. <laughs> First of all, thank you so yes. much for having me. Yeah. Uh, I love what you're doing again. I'll mm. reiterate that. Thank uh, you. Because uh, for me, I think uh, if you know something that can make a difference to another human mm. being, you have a moral obligation to mm. share it. And that's what you're doing. Yes. So I take off my heart to you thank for you. that. Thank you. And uh, I wish you all the best. Mm. Uh, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in Australia. Yes. And for the audience, thanks for having me. Yeah. And uh, you have a beautiful country, Kenya. It but uh, there is also other opportunities there. And let us do the right things with uh, our young people. Yes. Thank you. And they are our future generation. Is I mean, they are our future leaders of yes. tomorrow. So it's important that we yeah. really take good care of them. But I also think young people should know how to do the right things with the opportunities that they've been given. Absolutely. Spot yes. on. Yes. Let's exactly. let them also do the right things eh, yeah. with the opportunities. I see how they take advantage of opportunities. Yes. They need to be able to do the right things with those opportunities. Akuna shortcuts. Okay. Microwave success is a lie, my people. It's a big lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. Putting the work. At the end of the day, you do, you put in the work, the experience, it pays off. I keep saying on this show, talent we are all given. Everyone here is talented, but skill set, <laughs> skill set we acquire separately. 
the skills you will acquire them separately and trust you will have to put in the work but i believe you've had an amazing time having this conversation i believe that some of the questions have really been answered and truthfully i can't wait to go and document the amazing work that our brothers and sisters are doing in australia i had emily here her husband her mom the entire family was actually here in studio and all we could do was just stare at her with so much admiration and then look at our guest today I feel like the universe continues to open its God has just a way of bringing the right people but I said 2024 we are doing nothing but you know bringing you inspire global and having meaningful and thought provoking conversations because I believe these conversations have to start with us we can't be told oh send your kid to Australia this send your kid here yeah, let's go on the ground and get the facts you know even for ourselves let's just be able to go there and see what is happening and be able to bring you those you know those stories and i love how you guys you are just i love our audience i love the maturity in you guys i appreciate the positive criticism as well i say on this platform we only deal with positive you know there is there is feedback and then there is positive feedback you get what i mean we take positive feedback very seriously and i always say if you can't comment also my email is right here lynn.gugi at lnn.digital feel free to interact with me i answer to those emails 99 percent of the time apart from when you are say malin can i marry you i will not answer that you will wait for life you know <laughs> you will wait for life uh, for a reply but thank you so much for watching and also thank you to our amazing partners of today's conversation tap tap send use the I, tap tap is not in australia though i know that it's not there right I don't think no it's really not know. it's not in australia yeah. but if you're in the us you're in canada you're in the uk why don't you try tap tap send to send money to your loved ones back at home and give me feedback as well. I say, I'll never sit here and give you products or be able to advocate for services that do not work. I've done my due diligence and that's why I keep telling you, tell me what your experience also with these products is. And to thank my incredible team today, I'm just here chilling with Muga. What one may disappear for the holiday season? Dama came through to assist. She's just there laughing. But guys, we've done an incredible job this year. Thank you so much. We wouldn't have done it alone as always. Muga likula kuku. So <laughs> like it's, it's the truth. Muga likula kuku. So we are about to go and look for another meal to make this Christmas uh, for the people who are still working here in the office. I'm going to be with you. That's on Monday at 10 a.m. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.